So I realize it may be a little disappointing to learn that we're not going to be doing a lot with constellations in this course. In fact, maybe that's the thing you were most looking forward to. Well, what I, what I at least want to do is show you a way that you can build your own star chart and how to use it so that you can go out and find constellations any time of the year. And so I, I feel like that's an important skill to learn in astronomy class. So I'm going to give you links to these two pages, right? And show you how you can cut these up and put them together to make your own star chart and then how to read it. Okay, so it's a little weird um, how you would cut this one up, all right? But what you do is you, uh, well, I'll just show you. You cut around the bottom here, you keep the white that's there in the square. And what you're gonna end up doing is making kind of like a pocket. Oh boy, here we go. Kind of a crazy cut. And we follow along the curve. And you'll notice as I'm cutting this that those are all times. Like I'm seeing here 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, right? And um, so what's kind of interesting about these star charts is you got the time on one side of the wheel, and you'll notice on the other side of our wheel, we're gonna have like the date. Okay, so you'll be able to use this for any date and time throughout the year. Okay, once you got that part cut, now what you need to do is cut out this oval out of the middle. All right, so I'm just gonna do that a second here. And as you're cutting that one, you might notice around the edges that you have directions. Uh, so this one says facing east, uh, there it says horizon, right? So this line actually all the way around the edges represents our horizon. Okay, we'll see how we use that once we get outside in just a minute. Sorry to make you watch me cut this here, but I'm almost there. Okay, and then now we can, we're done with this side and we can go to the other one. And this one, we actually just cut out the whole circle. We don't want to keep any of the gray stuff. We count this, cut this out just around the circle. And as you're doing that, you'll notice all the dates of the whole calendar. Now I should note, just while I'm cutting this, that this particular star chart is printed for northern latitudes in the United States, or really anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. So you would actually need to use a different star chart if you were way north, or way south, or way, um, or near the equator. So like any observer in the Southern Hemisphere, for example, would need to use a different star chart. But even if you were near the equator, you would need to use a different star chart. Okay, so now here's what I'm gonna do. I take this, this part, and I fold it in half, right, well not in half, but I fold it right along this line, right there. This is the pocket kind of thing that I'm making. And now, you'll see that the wheel fits in, oh, look at that beautiful thing, look at that, right? And so you know you did it right when the dates, you can see all the dates around the edges of the thing. And then the idea is you can rotate this as the um, you know evening goes on. You're kind of doing two different things. I'll show you that in a second. But to make it a little more stable, there's, you see there's these little white marks right there. That's where we can staple it. So I'm just gonna see if I got a stapler here a second. I do. So let's staple it and then we'll actually see how this thing really works. Alrighty. Oops, oh no, I did what I'm not supposed to do. I accidentally <laughs> stapled the wheel. See that, so I gotta make sure that, uh, I gotta undo that a second. Don't wanna staple the wheel, otherwise it doesn't work. You can't turn it. Okay, so I'm just gonna staple the actual holder. There we go. Okie dokie. So let's take a look at how this thing, how this thing works. First of all, is just how to hold it. Like, how do, you, how do you read what you're looking at, let alone setting it for the right date or time? Just how do you even read this thing? So let's go outside and see if we can't figure that out together. Okay, so we mentioned that this circle represents the horizon, right? Like the line all the way around the edges represents the horizon. And if you see on there, it says like things are written upside down. It says facing north, facing east, 
facing south. Now this might be kind of weird because you've got like on a map, when you look at a map of the ground, west is on the left and east is on the right when north is up. And here it's the opposite. North is at the top and east and west are flipped. And that, it gives you a clue of how you're supposed to use this thing, right? Because with a map of the earth, you're looking down, but with, and so you got wet, like let me just orient myself here, right? Okay, so for me, I'm gonna get oriented. North is that way, west is that way, and east is that way, all right? So when I'm looking down at the ground, I got north going the right way, but west, this says facing west, it's the wrong way, it seems. That's because I'm supposed to be looking at the sky, of course. So I'm just gonna go up and look at the sky with this thing. And when you're looking at the sky, now I have north is that way, west is that way, and east is that way, the way it's supposed to be. So you're holding this above your head, that's the way you're observing this. And then the way you're thinking about this whole map, right, is that the very center of the map represents the point straight overhead. All right, so the center of the map is straight overhead, but then a point here near the horizon, say near the western horizon, represents something that's very low to the ground in the west. So you're kind of like stretching, like this kind of weird shape needs to be stretched over your entire sky, right? So if it's here at the top, like I can see Draco, some constellation is here in the north, that actually is way back behind me near the northern horizon. So one way to, to think about observing is like, okay, I'm gonna set this up now, and let's just say, you know, wherever I have it set up, this constellation Orion is, is here in the west. Then if I'm actually using this so I'm not laying on my back the whole time, I'm actually just gonna turn it and kind of hold it so it says facing west, and I'm gonna hold it like this, and now I can just look at kind of this part of my map, Right, and I'm like, that's gonna be roughly in this part of my sky. You know what I'm saying? So I would expect at this point to be like, okay, Orion should be, you know, a little bit to the south of west, kind of over there, right? And like, likewise, if I wanted to turn my body and look, well, maybe let's look north since the house is in the way, okay? I wanna look north, I would just turn this thing and be like, okay, now I'm facing north and these are the constellations I'm expecting to see in the north. All right, cool. So now we can talk about, let me set it for today, right? So when I'm making this video, it is October um, like 10. Okay, and I can actually set this for what time it is right now, which is, uh, <laughs> well, you notice the times here are all like nighttime, obviously, and I'm out here in the daytime. So if I were to set it for tonight, I might say tonight at 10 o'clock, Right, so what I do is I line up the date and the time that I'm interested in. And I could set that for nine o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever time I want. But when I set October 10 at 10 o'clock, okay, that's what I'm interested in. And this is what the sky is gonna look like tonight. So um, if I was curious then, all right, what is rising, right? Um, uh, rising in the east, right, at, at 10 o'clock tonight. I would look towards the east where I could see the noisy truck and I would be looking at my map here and I see that the bright star Capella and another bright star Aldebaran are both rising in the east. Okay, so you know, see like this is what it boils down to to learning constellations. I mean, honestly, most professional astronomers never really learn very many constellations. The amateurs are the ones learning it and the way I learned constellations was actually by working in a planetarium as as a college student where I had to go out and I had to, I had to take star wheel like this and I just had to kind of like practice looking up at the sky and saying oh there's oh I can see kind of the pattern there it is and I can see it in the whole sky so it takes that kind of not only practice but it really takes seeing it on the sky in order to learn these constellations. So you're not actually gonna be expected to learn very many of these constellations in our course, but if it's something you are excited and passionate about, this is the only tool you need. You just gotta go out and practice in the night sky, see those constellations um, for yourself. All right, so I just got up at 6.30. It is October, um, 
what is it, October 9, and it's still dark outside. So I thought this would be a good chance for us to take a peek at our star chart. I've got it set here to October 9 at about 6.30. It's pretty close. And um, if we take a look at it, we can see that in the south, kind of the southwest, I should see the constellation Orion. Uh, that's kind of right up here in the sky. So let's go take a peek outside and I'll see if I can use my star chart and if we can see this constellation. Now, in order for this to work, I'm undoubtedly going to just have to take some pictures because um, video is just not going to capture these stars. Cool, so when you see these pictures, you can see really what my eye is seeing, which is that um, the pattern of this constellation, like the three stars that make up its belt and its sword, um, really match what I'm seeing in the star chart. Let's take a quick peek back at the star chart. Whoa, okay, here we go. And um, Orion has these three stars, and it's got, uh, and of course the size of the star shows how bright it is, right? And so I can really see that pattern in the sky, but what looks so small in this star chart is actually really huge, huge on my sky, right? So there's a picture again just to see what it looks like um, on the sky. All right, that's pretty cool. While I'm at it, let's look at one more thing, right? Because as I look at, uh, as I look here at my star chart, here's Orion, and if I look further to the west, you can see this little cluster of stars, it's called the Pleiades, and I can see that with my eyes right now. Let's see if I can capture a picture of that. So I'm, I was looking uh, south, and now I'm just gonna kinda look towards the west, and now I'm going, I'm going kinda up, right, here's my deck. I'm going kinda up, 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 and yeah, I can see it with my eyes, so now I'm gonna take another picture so that you can see it. Cool, and you can see that this, this Pleiades is just this tiny little cluster of stars. It's like seven or eight stars that are close together. All right. Okay, so I, I wanted to take this outside just to give you a chance to sort of see what it looks like when you're putting this up, um, up against the sky. Again, it'll work much better with your eyes than I can do it on this camera. Um, but again, I just, I just want to show you. All right, have fun looking at the sky.